force in full swing throughout our state. California National Guard was seen installing uh, flood dams and sandbags to the Sacramento area where you heard them highlighting those levee areas where they've had problems in the past. And officials in San Mateo County as well as San Jose have um, declared these emergency response operations so they can also be added to the funding or any emergency response that they could get. Um, several parts across Northern California also closed down just completely due to hazards. And this is new this midday. Uh, uh, coming from the governor's office, South San Francisco Unified School District said it would actually cancel classes on Thursday. So we'll continue to monitor any other cancellations that we hear. Carrie joins us now. And Carrie, the CHP is suggesting that people don't drive. And to that, I would suggest if you are an employer, maybe send people home early. Yeah, today. think about that. The timeline of when this storm is going to be the worst. Later this evening is when we are expecting the brunt of this storm, and you don't want all of your employees coming out of the building at 5 o'clock when it is just dumping down raining and very dangerous out there. This is a storm that has intensified over the Pacific over the past 24 hours. You're probably hearing the term bomb cyclone, which is actually a meteorological term, meaning that the intensity of the storm, the pressure in the storm has dropped 24 millibars in 24 hours, so it just intensified rapidly. But it's also an atmospheric river because of its connection all the way to Hawaii. It's bringing in that tropical moisture and slinging it right into the Bay Area. Now it does come in waves, so it's not going to be raining hard the entire time. And the little bit of a break that we were expecting is happening right now. We do still have a few more hours before that next really intense band of rain starts to move into the Bay area. But right now we're just seeing some lighter showers moving through, maybe very steady in parts of Marin County and down the peninsula. And then some lighter showers from Palo Alto to Sunnyvale down to Campbell as well as San Jose. We're also seeing some light showers down to Morgan Hill, but it has a backed off just a little bit in terms of how heavy it, it is now compared to earlier this morning. So looking at the timeline and what's ahead at 430, we're seeing really bright colors here. This this indicates some heavier rain. Oranges and reds where it may be coming down at rainfall rates over an inch per hour. And we'll see that moving into San Francisco later this evening. But this is also when the winds will be picking up. And here we are at 7 o'clock. We see it spreading into San Jose, into the Tri-Valley, covering parts of the East Bay as well as the peninsula. Pretty much all the Bay Area is going to be in the brunt of this storm between 6 and 7 o'clock this evening. Look at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. It's still continuing, and several hours of this kind of rainfall is going to quickly make those issues of flooding down trees and power outages a real possibility here going into later tonight. We do start to see it easing up in the North Bay, but that's not until 1 o'clock in the morning, and there's still some really intense rainfall moving across the rest of the Bay Area. At 5 o'clock in the morning, we're seeing some rain returning to the North Bay, with really heavy downpours and it's just going to be sweeping through in waves kind of like what we're seeing right now with some breaks in between. We take it all the way to three o'clock tomorrow afternoon and there's still some pockets of some heavy rain moving through and Santa Rosa may also be seeing some of that heavy rain continuing off and on until late tomorrow night. So we've got several hours of this in total. We're looking at about two to eight inches of rainfall and the winds will be peaking later this evening with 40 to 60 mile per hour winds that is expected to continue until tomorrow morning. So we've been talking about the possibility of more flooding, mudslides, power outages, as well as down trees. This is a live look at the San Mateo Bridge. So right now, once again, the rain has eased up, but look at those waves there on the bay and it is very choppy out there. Also a reminder of the coastal conditions that we have and how hard it is to drive on these east to west bridges and roadways ways as we are getting these strong winds coming through. If you do encounter an area where water is covering the road, we always say turn around, don't drown. Let me tell you about why. Because just six inches of rainfall can knock you over and sweep you away. And that is not a lot of water, but 12 inches of flowing water can sweep away a small car and 18 inches of rainfall or accumulation on the roads could sweep away a truck or an SUV. So even if you're in a larger vehicle, you just don't know how deep the water is and you could get 
get swept away. This is how most of the fatalities happen in flooding situations. But we've also been talking about debris flows and mudslides. This kind of rainfall does not have a chance to be absorbed into the soil. And if you are in a hilly area and especially in a burn scar, uh, you're you could see this runoff really happening quickly as we get multiple days of soaking rainfall and that could cause a mudslide to happen. So that's the reason why they're evacuating some areas, especially in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And we have already heard that Portola Valley is not going to have school tomorrow, and they're also evacuating some areas in that CZU burn scar area. Now let's talk about the wind. The high wind warning will continue until 10 o'clock tomorrow, but we do expect the highest of those winds to be happening later this evening. So this is as people are getting off work, most likely as we are going to see more people out there at three o'clock. Look at Half Moon Bay, 50 mile per hour wind gusts and 33 mile per hour wind gusts in parts of the North Bay. But pretty much all of the Bay Area is going to have some high winds. Of course, the coastal areas and those upper elevations tend to get the highest amount. At 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, we're starting to see the wind calming down and we'll start to see the rain tapering off and becoming more scattered. And we'll turn our attention to the next storms that are going to be coming in on Saturday into Sunday. We've got another storm that's going to be coming in, so not much of a break here. And then there's even a shorter break between Sunday and Monday when another storm will be arriving. And we're also seeing more lining up out there in the Pacific that could be moving through at least through the end of next week. Let's talk about the Sierra because this is a live view. The snow is just now getting going and do not travel there whatsoever. We have really messy conditions there and we are looking at the possibility of about 14 to 23 inches of snow, but that may be shifting back and forth from rain to snow. There is a lot more snow ahead going into the weekend with all of these storms coming through and look at these models and what they're putting down for uh, the next week or so, possibly close to 100 inches of snow in that forecast as we look at what to expect here. Once again, not a lot of breaks here. We're getting to the brunt of the storm later this evening and then start to see it become more scattered into tomorrow on Friday. Not a lot of a break here and just some peaks of sunshine. And then on Saturday, a second storm comes in third storm on Monday, possibly more storms beyond that. So of course, we'll have more updates right here. Lauren Scott.